another episode of Sign Connect. I am Teacher Nell, your science teacher for today. Are you now ready to learn? Let's start! Ionic compounds are formed from strong electrostatic interactions between ions, which result in higher melting points and electrical conductivity compared to covalent compounds, which have bands where electrons are shared between atoms. To know more about this video lesson, please stay with me as we discuss all about ionic and covalent compounds. Welcome grade 9 science learners to our new video lesson for today which is all about ionic and covalent compounds. The most essential learning competency for this lesson is to recognize different types of compounds, ionic or covalent, based on their properties such as melting point, hardness, polarity, and electrical and thermal conductivity. It is expected at the end of this video lesson, your targets are the following. Recognize a unique and covalent compound based on their physical properties. Perform and view a video experiments on solubility and conductivity tests of compounds containing a unique and covalent band. Cite and explain characteristics distinguishing a unique from covalent compounds and appreciate the importance and technological applications of such bands or compounds. Before we begin, try to answer the next five questions in your answer sheet. Don't forget to submit your answers to your science teacher. Directions Identify what is asked or described in each item, then write the letter of the correct answer in your notebook or answer sheet. Number one, elements combine to form blank A atoms, B compounds, C negative ions, D positive ions. Number two, what part of an atom is involved in chemical bonding? A. Electrons B. Neutrons C. Nucleus D. Protons Number 3. A covalent band involves a blank of electrons. A. Borrowing B. Exchanging C. Sharing D. Switching Number 4. Which of the following is true about a unique compounds? A. They are stronger than covalent bonds B. They are usually formed from two metals C. They have low melting and boiling points D. They can conduct electricity and a solid state Number 5. Which type of compound the sodium chloride or NaCl? A. Covalent B. Ionic C. Metallic D. None of the above How did you find the tests? Did you find it difficult? Don't worry. This just means that there are more things that you can learn from this video lesson about a unique and covalent compounds. Let us define first the following words or group of words used in this video lesson. Covalent bond is formed by sharing of electrons between atoms. One pair of shared electrons forms one covalent band. Polar covalent band is formed if the electronegativity difference is less than 1.9 and more than 0.4. Nonpolar covalent band is formed if the electronegativity difference is equal to 0.4 or less. Ionic band 
it involves complete transfer of electrons where ions are formed. Covalent compounds are non-conductors of electricity in the solid phase and in solution. Ionic compounds conduct electricity when in solution but not in solid phase. Let us do the following activity. Please make sure you have your answer sheet and pen with you and don't forget to submit your answer to your science teacher. Arrange the jumbled letters to get the correct word. We have letter N, letter I, letter C, letter I, letter O. The clue or meaning of this word are the following. It is a chemical band that involves a complete transfer of electrons. It involves metals with low electronegativity and non-metals with high electronegativity. What do you think is the correct word of that jumbled letters? Next, arrange the jumbled letters again to get the correct word. We have letters L, E, N, T, C, O, V, A. What is the clue or meaning of this word? You have, it is a chemical band that involves sharing of electrons that results in the formation of covalent compound whose representative particle is a molecule. The molecule does not carry a charge. What do you think is that word using the jumbled letters? This time, let us explore another activity. Entitled, Difference Between Ionic and Covalent Compound. What to do? Number one, watch the video experiment on the next slide. Number two, after watching the video experiment, answer the guide questions that follow. Number three, write your answer in your notebook or answer sheet. Time to take a look at some specific examples of ionics and covalence. So let's jump right on in. Take a look down here. All right, so check it out. Over here on the left, these right here, let's give you a close-up look at each of these. These are all the ionic compounds, okay? And then if you compare that to our covalent compounds over here on the right, you can actually very easily see that there's really no distinguishing uh, marks between them. Uh, the ionics and the covalents kind of look the same, especially when you take a look at this one as compared to this one. They're, it's all just white crystals or different colored crystals or different chunks. So a physical description of a substance really doesn't do you much good when you're trying to identify something as ionic or covalent. So let's take a look at some properties that are helpful. Check it out. All right, so what I've got is each of those same six compounds dissolved in water. <coughs> so these right here are over on, the, on this side. These are all the ion compounds. You can see that one is soluble, right? This one also soluble. And this one right here, also soluble. Over on the other side, these are the covalent <coughs> compounds. And as you can see, that one is not soluble. 
And this one is a little more difficult to see, but it's floating at the top right here, also insoluble. And this one, actually of these three, is the only one that is soluble. So as a general trend, the ionic compounds are more soluble in water than the covalent compounds. Now, yes, I do realize that there are exceptions to the rule. There are some ionics that don't dissolve in water and there are some covalents that do dissolve in water. Um, but consider this just kind of a little preview or a teaser trailer, if you will, of stuff that's about to come up in the second semester. But just overall, the general trend is ionics are soluble, whereas uh, the covalents usually are not. All right, let's go on to the next uh, next property. All right, so the next property we're gonna look at is the melting point. And for that, I have grabbed our trusty safety data sheets here, which lists all of those physical properties on there. Now, instead of just reading it off to you for all six of them, what I'll do is I'll just post them like so. And you can very easily see that the ionic compounds generally have a higher melting point than Now again, there are some exceptions to the rule, but overall, or tend to have higher melting points than the covalent compounds do. And last but not least on our list of properties is electrical conductivity, which for our purposes, it's a lot easier to see if the lights are turned off. Now, through the magic of editing, I'm gonna take you through these one at a time. So this is an ionic compound called potassium iodide. And you can clearly see the lights are coming on, so this does conduct electricity. This is magnesium chloride, <coughs> also an ionic compound, and it conducts electricity. Here is another ionic compound called copper 2 nitrate, also clearly conducts electricity. But what about the covalent compounds? So this first one here is something called p-dichlorobenzene, which is used in mothballs, and you can see that this one doesn't conduct electricity. Sugar or sucrose also does not conduct electricity, and wax also does not conduct electricity. So what's the deal? Ionic compounds conduct electricity, but covalents do not. Why? Because ionic compounds are made of ions, and ions are needed to conduct electricity. These covalent compounds here don't split into ions, therefore they don't conduct and there you have it, a quick little foray into the world of ionic and covalent compounds. Thank you for watching on that video, on that video experiment. Guide questions. Number one, what are the compounds that A dissolves or soluble in water? conducts electricity and solution, higher melting points. Number two, make a general statement about the properties of a unique and covalent compounds. Number three, what common properties did you observe in this activity? Keep this in mind that a unique compounds conduct electricity when in solution but not in solid phase. A unique compounds generally soluble in water and in polar solvents. Covalent compounds are non-conductors of electricity in the solid phase and in solution. They have a lower melting temperature than compounds formed by ionic compounds. Try to look at this table. It is divided into two ionic compounds and the covalent compounds. So we have example of ionic compounds, potassium iodide, magnesium chloride, copper nitrate. For a covalent compounds, we have table sugar, dichroethanine, and pentacosane. So when we check about their solubility for ionic compounds, of course, they are soluble. Yes, the melting point we have uh, 686, so 116, 118, 115, so they are higher melting points and they conduct electricity. Compared to covalent compounds, they are not soluble. Their melting point is lower than ionic compounds and they do not conduct electricity.
Let's proceed to activity number one entitled Answer Me Confoundly. Directions Please understand the paragraph that will be shown on the next slide. Answer the guide questions that follow. Write your answer in your science notebook or in your answer sheet. Ionic compounds have long had a wide variety of uses and applications. Many minerals are ionic. They easily dissolve to provide electrolyte solutions. In medicine, electrolyte replacement is needed when a person has prolonged vomiting or diarrhea and as a response to strenuous athletic activity. Ionic liquids are consisting entirely of ions and can be further defined as molten salts having melting points lower than 100 degrees Celsius. They are used as electrolyte materials like in lithium or sodium ion batteries due to their characteristic properties such as non-volatility, high thermal stability, and high ionic conductivity. The cleansing action of soap and detergent is due to the presence of the polar covalent and the ionic end which makes it soluble in water plus a non-polar covalent end which in turn dissolves and removes the dirt or grease. Guide questions Have you experienced drinking an electrolyte after vomiting or when you had diarrhea? How does it taste? What are the available commercial electrolyte solutions? What if these are not available? Which household substances can be mixed with water to serve as substitutes? Number two, in, lit in a lithium battery, which particles or entities are responsible why it, ex it exhibits electrical conductivity? Number three, why is it that soap and detergents are used as cleansing agents? Keep this in mind that compounds held by ionic bonds are crystals consisting of op oppositely charged ions, each of which is strongly banded to closest neighbor. They have high densities because of the tight arrangement of the ions. They have high melting points as a result of the high amount of energy needed to overcome the attractive forces between the ions. They have high boiling points because much energy is needed to separate the ions. Covalent bonds create molecules that can separate from each other when a lower amount of energy is added to them. Molecular covalent compounds usually have low melting and boiling points. They tend to be soft and relatively flexible because they easily break. They are usually gases, liquids, and soft solids. Ionic compounds uses and applications. Many minerals are ionic. They easily dissolve to provide electrolyte solutions. In medicine, electrolyte replacement is needed when a person has prolonged vomiting or diarrhea. And as a response to strenuous athletic activity, ionic liquids are consisting entirely of ions and can be further defined as molten salts having melting points lower than 100 degrees Celsius. They are used as electrolyte materials like in lithium or sodium ion batteries due to their characteristic properties such as non-volatility, high thermal stability, and high ionic conductivity. Number five, the cleansing action of soap and detergents is due to the presence of the polar covalent and ionic end which makes it soluble in water plus a non-polar covalent and which in turn dissolves and removes the dirt or grease. This time, try to reflect what you have learned or what you have um, digested in this video lesson. I have learned that I wish to ask my teacher about don't forget to submit your answer to your science teacher. For you, for, to strengthen the additional knowledge or to strengthen the ideas that you have learned from this video lesson, please do a research on household materials which contain a unique and covalent compound. List down their properties. Write your answers in your science notebook or answer sheet. This time, let us assess what you have learned about this lesson on a unique and covalent compounds. 
Please try to answer the next 10 questions. Directions. Identify what is asked or described in each item, then write the letter of the correct answer in your notebook or answer sheet. Number 1. Which type of compound is sodium chloride or NaCl? A. Covalent B. Ionic C. Metallic D. None of the above Number 2. Which of the following is true about ionic compounds? A. They are stronger than covalent bands B. They are usually formed from two metals. C. They have low melting and boiling points. D. They can conduct electricity and the solid state. Number 3. A covalent band involves a blank of electrons. A. Borrowing. B. Exchanging. C. Sharing. D. Switching. Number 4. What part of an atom is involved in chemical banding? A. Electrons B. Neutrons C. Nucleus D. Protons Number 5. Elements combined to form blank is called A. Atoms B. Compounds C. Negative ions D. Positive ions Number 6. Why do atoms react one another to form chemical bands? A. To produce ions B. To attain, attain stability C. To form molecules D. To form compounds Number 7. Which of the following substances when dissolving water will conduct electricity? Dichloroethane Magnesium chloride Sugar Pentacosane Number 8. What kind of force is present in ionic band? A. Neutral force B. Retentive force C. Repulsive force D. Electrical force Number 9. Which of the following have the highest melting point? A. Table sugar B. Dichroethane C. Potassium iodide D. Magnesium chloride Number 10. When does covalent banding take place? A. It takes place when atoms attain a stability. B. It takes place when atoms collide with one another. Letter C. It takes place when the attraction between atoms is strong. Letter D. It takes place when atoms share electrons with one another. Congratulations, learners, for finishing the video lesson. I hope you enjoyed learning with me today. Remember, learning is fun when I connect.